So what's happening with the weather? Have things panned out as we expected? Um, well, boy, it was pretty accurate yesterday, uh, I think, and we're joined again by Philip Duncan of uh, Independent uh, Forecasting and Weather Information Service, Weather Watch New Zealand. Philip, lovely to have you back with us again. Um, you were pretty bang on yesterday, weren't you? Thank you, Sean. Um, yeah, yeah. The um, Well, I mean, yes, uh, it's nice to, to hear that, but, um, you know, I've got to also give huge praise, and we've just done this in a, in a tweet and a news story, uh, to the global computer modelling, which picked this storm with unbelievable accuracy. We put out maps last week, yeah. um, that you know, over a week ago, that nailed the exact tracking of this storm. Of course, they can always wiggle around, they can always move, and next time around, the models might not be as perfect. But this time around, 15 days out, before the storm was even a, a thing, they nailed exactly where it would be at 4 o'clock this morning near Great Barrier Island. Yeah, all right. Um, Philip, uh, I, I'm going to ask you, um, do you think, and the thing about forecasting is, no early so you can do something. Uh, do you think from what you have seen, and I know you probably do this as a lay person, that the forecasting of this event has been used to greatest advantage in terms of preparation? Yes, I, I think you know this was a good event to, to learn from um, and and to sort of figure out what we do well and what we don't do well. There are definitely problems in New Zealand with communications around severe weather events, and I don't mean from Met Service. I mean from other authorities, councils, and um, civil defence, for example. So w there needs to be better communications. I think we need a stronger nationwide system, and it's because we don't get storms like this on a regular basis that you know the the team that we used to work with um, in Auckland, for example, several years ago when we had our last major cyclone, uh, Wilma, which came through, uh, most of those people aren't there anymore. So there's always this sort of churn, um, and that's noticeable. I know in Australia they've got you know different services to deal with emergencies and storms. Um, I, you know, I just think it uh, would be good for us to learn from that. I don't think to, I'm not trying to beat anybody up. I actually think we do in New Zealand a pretty good job around severe weather and natural disasters, but we can always get better. Mm. Where are we now? Let's get back to, to today. Uh, where is Gabriel now and where is it heading? Are we through the worst of it? And, and I get the horrible feeling maybe we're not and that we're going to get some pretty devastating reports out of uh, East Cape. And yeah, Gisborne. we're about... Yeah, we're about halfway through the event, um, which probably sounds a bit stressful for a lot of people, but don't worry, it's not all um, going to be a repeat of what we've just had for the same amount of time. But what I mean is the storm is still with New Zealand um, for another couple more days, or at least another 36 hours, and so severe weather remains. But a lot of places that have had the very heaviest of rain, especially Coromandel Peninsula, Bay of Plenty, Gisborne East Cape and Hawke's Bay, the rain is starting to ease. The heaviest falls are starting to ease. But there's still rain stuck at the back end of the system. So as Gabriel tracks away over East Cape this afternoon and then clears off the North Island tonight and tomorrow, the rain behind it comes back again. It's not the same rain event, so don't like panic, but it just means there's more wet weather. But really probably the main feature today is still the wind. Uh, heavy rain is pushing down the North Island. Heavy rain is stuck around Northland and northwestern Auckland, but severe gales are still hanging around and they're going to drag across the North Island as the storm pulls away today. All right. When is it all over, Philip, and what's on the horizon? Tomorrow is kind of like the uh, um, sort of the end of it, really. I was talking to Bob McDavid, the former Met Service weather yeah, ambassador yeah, geez, yesterday. that's an old... Uh, that name brings He's back a memories. great man. Yeah. Yeah. And he said to me, you got to think of this storm. And he told me to tell the public this. Think of the storm as like your, Gabriel is a, is a menu in a restaurant. And Sunday um, and Monday morning was the entree. Last night, this morning was the main course. And then today, tonight, that's the dessert. So tomorrow is probably sort of the after dinner mint. Um, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's just a little bit left over tomorrow. It's still windy in some areas. And the South Island... Kaikoura Ranges, they're going to have plenty of rain falling for another day or so. So it unwinds. Uh, today's another peak day of, of severe weather. Tomorrow it starts to unwind. And by the time we get to Thursday and Friday, it's moving away from New Zealand finally. And we get maybe a hopefully a bit of high pressure coming in for the weekend. Wow. Okay. So, and then of course, 
as any good restaurant meal, you, you have the eye-watering bill of the cleaner. <laughs> yes, which I think, you know, and we were saying this a week ago, that this could be the most costly storm New Zealand's ever had. Um, part of the reason we were saying it's the biggest storm we've seen so far for northern New Zealand this century is because it, it, it was. You know, the, the low air pressure right down there. I'm not sure if it broke records, though, the air pressure. We'll have to wait and see. Um, there wasn't a lot of sort of information coming out of the official sources last night about that kind of information. We are hoping to fix that this year by working a little closer with Met Service, but um, hopefully today we'll find out what the actual low air pressure was. Yeah. Philip, I see Met Service continues to have this ridiculous thing about some Maori god and what it's doing and we're in the hands of the gods. Have you got any comment on that? So I'm, um, I'm actually kind of a bit middle of the fence on this one. I understand. Um, I saw all the comments about it, believe me. Um, and and I, I look at it from a different point of view. I think that in New Zealand, you've got to communicate to as many people as possible. And if that's, um, if that's a way that that messaging gets through to people who otherwise wouldn't be listening or caring, then I do think it's good. Philip, Philip and I'm going to be just, brutally honest. I don't think that there are a lot of adherents of followers of whatever the god is of wind or, or weather for Māori. I just think it's completely woke virtue signalling and dressing it. Going to add, <laughs> yeah. I was going to add, though, that I think, I don't know if the timing of it, you know, it, it, sometimes in the middle of an event is not perhaps the best time to start trying something brand new like that. So I'm, I can hear, I absolutely can understand what you're saying. I also know that... Um, we do have some issues trying to get communication through to everybody in this country, and if this is a way that might start that happening more, then I'm supportive uh, of that. I'd say so buy everyone a cell phone. Using them, it's silly. <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, Philip, thank you so much. So, so what you're saying is, look, the worst is probably just passing. Um, it's not going to calm down immediately, um, but we're on the up. Yeah, and I think a lot of the places that had really bad weather last night will see improvements today. It's still still severe weather risks, but mm. some improvements. Hopefully, um, most places will sort of be better off in 12 to 24 hours. But Auckland, uh, there's still a chance of damaging gales today as the back end of the storm comes through. So it's not completely finished yeah. for the north. And Northland's still got this rain, which is um, much more than was forecast. Although we did say if the storm stalled, then rainfall totals would go right up. And that's... Yeah. Basically, what has happened, the storm, storm did slow down quite a lot last night, yeah. uh, and this morning it's starting to pick up again and Philip, move away. Philip, is it an internationally famous storm, or is it just a storm? It is, actually. Uh, we're a CNN affiliate, and they were in touch with us um, over well, Friday last week about this, and they've had a number of news stories. And in fact, yesterday, I couldn't believe it, but the second story trending on CNN was Cyclone uh, Gabriel hitting New Zealand. So despite all the balloons being shot down and the UFOs in North America... This and was, those uh, terrible uh, t earthquakes in Turkey and Syria as well. That's Philip, right. Philip, always good talking to you. Thank you so much for the update. Very useful, I'm sure, for platform you too. Uh, followers. Very much. Cheers, Philip. Philip Duncan from Weatherwatch New Zealand. Yeah, the Met Service is still doing this. Uh, and I can't bring myself to repeat the name, and I don't really care. It is just such woke virtue signalling from the Met Service meteorological, scientific, and they've got some bullshit, woke rubbish about some god of, let's see what the Maori god of weather is doing now. I find it actually patronising and offensive of the Met Service, and I think they should hang their bloody heads in shame. And it's that sort of crap we need to get rid of in this country, to be honest, and it's just an outrageous waste of money and stupidity.